Many of us think of our computer desktop as a place where files end up and it's so cluttered and we don't know what to do with it. And there's always these generic pictures that are on there that we don't know how to change. However, your desktop can be a tool that can keep you productive and help you find what you're looking for every day. I'll show you how to make that happen today on Tuesday Tech Training. Welcome to Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a digital productivity trainer. Most people think of their computer desktop as a place to store files, maybe have some shortcuts, and that's about all. And although you can do those things on your desktop, there are a lot more productive ways to use it. Today I'll show you how to change the view on your desktop, how to hide icons, how to organize icons, different ideas of things you could do to make your icons more productive, and how to customize some of the settings. The first thing we'll talk about is something I always get asked is how to change the background on your desktop. The first thing you need to do is close any windows that you have open so that you can get to your desktop. And you may have something that's generic. It might have a Windows logo. It might have some pretty pictures, but they aren't your pictures. Um, or you may just have a bunch of icons out there. No matter what, just get to that screen. And then we're going to right click in an area where there's not a file. So let's right click in a blank space. And then we're going to choose the bottom most option, which is personalize. In the menu that pops up, you can see we're talking about the background. That's the background of your desktop that we're talking about. And you can see there's multiple different options. Right here, where it currently says slideshow, which is what I have mine set at, you can choose to have a single picture, a solid color, or a slideshow. And the way you create a slideshow is to have a folder that's full of pictures that you want to rotate. If you choose to use these picture or slideshow option, you'll see this browse icon that appears. That's how you go and find the picture or the folder of pictures on your computer. Since I have the slideshow option chosen, I have a few more options here than you would see in the other cases. I have the option to change the picture every however often I choose. I currently have it set as an hour. I also have the option to shuffle the photos rather than going in the order in the folder. And then you can choose whether or not you'd like the slideshow to run if you're on battery power, because the slideshow does take a little bit more power than just having one picture or a solid color in the background. The next option that you'll have, whether you use the picture or the slideshow, is this fit. And this is how it's going to fit on the screen. I currently have mine to just fit, which means the computer will figure out the best way to fit it in there. There's also all, all these other options. I highly recommend that you play with them. The tile can be kind of a fun one, depending on what pictures you have, and see what you like the best. Everybody's gonna have a different preference here. And the last thing you wanna look at here is the color in the background. So if you're not going to use something that tiles the whole screen or fills the whole screen, you'll need to choose a background color. Depending on your pictures, it might be easiest just to choose the black like I have. Before spending a lot of time organizing your desktop and getting it customized, think about where you're most likely to use shortcuts. Is it going to be on the desktop or is it going to be your taskbar at the bottom? Or is it going to be your start menu over here? Everyone has different preferences, so think about what you gravitate more towards. If you gravitate towards going to the Start button, you might want to customize your Start menu, and I'll leave a link for that video down below. If you're someone who uses the taskbar and you often go down here to find what you're looking for, then you will want to customize your taskbar and not spend a lot of time on the desktop. But if you're someone who's always gravitated to using the desktop and the shortcuts that exist there, then that's what you should do. Next thing I want to show you is the shortcuts, and these are the items on the left hand side. Mine are all shortcuts. You may have some files and especially folders and photos and things like that that you have downloaded that are not shortcuts. I recommend from a productivity standpoint that you keep all of your documents in the documents area on your computer because that's the way it's built to work the best. 
And for those using the most up-to-date Windows 10, it may also be backing that up to OneDrive, which is a great option. That's a cloud option. That's a whole nother video, but that is a good option to have everything backed up on your computer. And if it's living here on the desktop, it may not be backed up. The way you know that you're looking at shortcuts is the little arrow. You see the little arrow in the bottom left corner of each of these. What a shortcut does is it points to a folder or a file in another location, but that folder file or whatever the program is, does not live here. This is just a shortcut to it. The last thing I want to show you is actually the most important and probably can help you be the most productive. This is going back to the right click. And I know we looked at the personalize down here at the bottom to change the background, but now we're gonna talk about the first two, the view and sort by, and we'll go one at a time. When you hover over view, you'll see a new menu opens up on the right. Here you can change the size of the icons. So if you need them larger, if you're having a hard time seeing them, or if you need them smaller to pack more into the screen, you can do that. You can also choose to auto arrange the icons. If you have your icons all over the place and you choose to auto arrange, it will kind of put them in this grid format like you see now. And you can actually turn that grid format off by unchecking the align icons to grid. Now I can move my icons wherever I want on the screen. This can be very helpful if you're someone who likes to work with hubs. And what I mean by that is if you'd like to have a hub of, let's say for me, creating videos. So I would have all the icons, all the shortcuts that are for creating videos in maybe the upper left corner. And then I would have my icons for doing things for blogging and other marketing things on the right hand side. If you're someone who that makes a lot of sense for, then you'll want to make sure that your view, remember right click and view is set to uncheck the align icons to grid. If you're someone who wants things a little more orderly and in alphabetical order on the left hand side, then you'll want to either do the auto arrange icons or you can put them in the grid and then also say align icons to grid because then you won't be able to pull them away from the grid. Let's see what happens if I choose auto arrange icons. You can see right there, they popped over into the grid. And even though I don't have the grid turned on, if I try to pull them away, it won't let me. And that's because I have that auto arrange on. That means the computer is in charge of arranging my files for me. One sneaky feature of auto arrange icons is that you actually can move them around, not in alphabetical order. You can do that. You can't pull it away. It's gonna stay in this grid over here but you can rearrange, as you can see, I can pull the Y up further top and it'll let me do that. And something to be aware of as you're moving things, look for the bar. That will put the folder in between the other two folders. If I drop it, when this folder is highlighted, it will put that folder inside the other folder, which is not what I want. The final option in the view menu is to turn off the desktop icons. And you can do that by unchecking this option here. So if we click on it, it'll uncheck it and you'll see what happens. You can see all of the icons disappear. This can be very helpful if you're going to be presenting and you don't want everyone to see what's on your screen. And to turn my icons back on, I'll right click, go to view, and I will choose this again and it will turn them back on. Now we'll look at the sort by menu. You can sort by name, so it's all alphabetical, no matter what kind of file it is. You can sort by size, item type, which is normally what I use. And what this does is it puts all of the programs usually together first, and then all the folders. And the folders will, by default, be alphabetical. And then you can also change it to date modified. If you're having a hard time finding something, sometimes this can be helpful to pop the thing right to the front that you most recently modified. No matter how you choose to use your desktop, think about beforehand, as we said earlier in the video, where you're most likely to use shortcuts and also how you work the best. Having that plan in advance 
will tell you the best way to organize the desktop or the taskbar or the start menu or all of them together in some specific way. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have a question, feel free to put that down there as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also give the video a thumbs up or share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. Once you do, a bell icon will show up and that will give you updates every time a video is posted. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.